Hey, what's up, guys? Okay, so if you've been following the news or, or NBA stories, you've seen that Markel Fultz has been dropped from the 76ers and he's been diagnosed with thoracic outlet syndrome. The weird thing about this whole thing is that everyone's criticizing the guy for having this shoulder injury that's made up in his head. He's got the best team of physical therapists trying to diagnose him. Nobody can seem to diagnose him. And this is exactly what each and every one of us has gone through with thoracic outlet syndrome. So when I watch the news and I see these guys sitting behind a desk saying he's the biggest bust in history, in NBA history, it's so easy to sit there when you haven't been through it yourself. So I found this video, Mike Korzemba, and he basically sums up everything into one video. So I'll link the video down below. But what we're going to do is we're going to watch the video, see the questions he raises, and then I'm going to answer those questions because the questions he has are the questions that everybody has. And I mean, if you struggle with thoracic outlet syndrome, you can see the pattern. You can see exactly what's happening with uh, Markel Fultz. So let's dive into it. Headed into last summer, Markel Fultz was the consensus number one pick in a loaded draft class. After torching competition at Washington, Fultz was seen by many as a surefire NBA all-star and was even compared to superstar James Harden. But then, weird things began to happen. Instead of taking the man everyone thought was the clear best player in the draft, the Celtics traded down and suddenly injury concerns about Markel. Anyway, you get it? That's where we're at now. This is way worse than a concern. So what's up guys? Mike here and today we're going to look at what in the world is happening with Markel Fultz. Because seriously, this is one of the weirdest NBA stories I have ever heard and obviously it's still not over. What have we seen something like the number one pick in the draft suddenly lose the ability to shoot because of some weird basically seemingly made up injury? So that's where we're at. Everybody's saying that it's a made-up injury. And it is so easy to jump on the bandwagon when you haven't experienced something yourself. So that is exactly what happens to each and every single one that struggles with thoracic outlet syndrome. You start having shoulder pain. You start dropping things because you get uh, atrophy in the arm. You start losing muscle. The pain from your neck into your upper chest which Markel has been diagnosed with, which is obviously the brachial plexus, which is damaging the nerve, is all trapped and caught up because of your top rib lifting, and it starts changing the way your arm can raise. You can't raise it as high, you can't move it as far out. Diagnosed him with thoracic outlet syndrome, but everyone still thinks it's a made-up injury. It's ridiculous. Anyway, let's get further into the video. In college, Fultz was a beast out of the pick and roll. He was a knockdown three-point shooter. He was athletic. He could score from just about anywhere on the court. He showed flashes of awesome court vision. He was what seemed like a can't-miss prospect. One Eastern Conference general manager said, This is not normal. It's perplexing. An Eastern Conference scout said, He shot it pretty well in college. He never looked like this before. These men were, of course, talking about the changes in Markel Fultz's shooting mechanics. Also known as possibly the weirdest thing a player has done in the summer before his rookie year in the history of the NBA. Okay, so his shooting mechanics has changed because he can't lift his arm as high anymore. He can't shoot. He can't extend that arm as far. He's got a winging of the scapula and it's holding everything back. He doesn't have that range of motion to rotate his arm around and his scapula is probably stuck in place a little and so he's changed his mechanics when I was boxing I changed my mechanics because I couldn't throw a punch anymore eventually I had to stop because anything I did moving this arm was a problem and his once smooth jumper had now become incredibly ugly and ineffective he thought Fultz changed his jump shot over the summer in an effort to improve which is ridiculous in itself why is the number one pick in the NBA draft changing his jump shot during the summer so like we just said he cannot raise his arm so now he's changed that he's not shooting as high because obviously when he's raising his arm it's trapping that nerve in the brachial plexus and causing his arm to go numb and probably causing a lot of pain, a lot of shooting pain that feels like electricity going down or it's just going numb. And the more he's doing that, his trap is tightening up, everything's getting tighter, his pec minor is probably pulling and he's getting this weird sensation in his chest. 
Here's a video of Markel taking a shot in high school. Now, here's a video of him taking one in the NBA Summer League, when things were still fine. Finally, here's the free throw that briefly broke the internet. A shot with a new hitch that was clearly different from the one we had just seen at Washington and, more importantly, a shot that just looked ugly. For more proof of the potential disaster here, just watch as Markel takes a jumper against the Pistons and kind of double pumps a wide open jumper so again obviously something is wrong obviously something has changed and Markel himself has admitted this when asked if he had changed his free throw form due to pain Markel said yeah for the most part I'm just trying other things to make free throws other things what does that even mean other things <laughs> okay so he's admitted he's in pain he's try he's trying to change things imagine you sign to the top elite level of NBA and now suddenly you're having shoulder problems and you've got thoracic outlet syndrome. I would hate that. I mean, I was just living my normal life and I couldn't even go to work. And back then everyone was saying to me, just get off the couch. Just you, you, we don't see anything wrong with you. Just go to the doctor, get yourself fixed. Everybody told me the same thing. I would have hated to be in the position he's in, in the spotlight. You just got signed. And now you're having thoracic outlet syndrome symptoms. Finally, when they sent him to a specialist, the diagnosis was even weirder than we could have imagined. In November, surgeon Ben Kibler described Markel Fultz's injury as a scapular muscular imbalance. What that injury was, pretty much no one knew. Really? Nobody knew what a scapular muscular imbalance is. Ask anybody with thoracic outlet syndrome, ask anybody with frozen shoulder, go to any orthopedic surgeon. And they'll tell you exactly what a scapular muscular imbalance is. What I said just now with him overextending and his wing scapula, it's basically the scapula is not working properly. It's not rotating around like it should. It's not helping keep that arm back. And one side is probably a little bit unstable. So the scapular muscular imbalance is not the same as the other side. And it's not, it's compensating basically for your arm. So your arm's going to click a lot when you're moving it. It might droop a little bit. And everyday movement, you're going to be using that scapula so much more because it's pulling on the wrong muscles. The serratus anterior muscles are going to be tight. They're going to be overcompensating. The scaling muscles in your neck are going to be compensating because nothing's working properly. Your diaphragm's not functioning properly. So you're probably breathing with your secondary respiratory muscles, which is your scalenes and your pec minor. So everything is affected. Your scapular imbalance affects your whole thoracic area. You're going to have tightness in your chest. You're going to get weird shooting pains because of the nerve. It's going to shoot into your shoulder blade. You might feel like someone's grabbing you around your throat. All these things come along with a winged scapula or a muscle imbalance and thoracic outlet syndrome. Since early December, 76ers executives have said that Markel no longer has soreness in his right shoulder, and some have even gone as far as to say that his muscular imbalance has been cured. So they treat him, everything calms down, he goes back to training, and for those first training session, maybe the first half an hour, he's shooting okay, because he doesn't have that tightness, he doesn't have that extreme pain. It's still there, but because they've loosened him up and soften that that muscle around the nerve it feels okay but as soon as he takes that first shot the muscle memory is going to kick in his scapula is going to pull funny again all the muscles are going to tighten, tighten up and so it will seem like he's okay but in reality, he's not okay. It's going to take him a long time to recover. I'll know the theory that this is all in Markel Fultz's head. This theory was given a lot more credibility when Brett Brown apparently said that Fultz had psychosomatic effects with his shooting. Psychosomatic effects with his shooting basically translates to, at this point, the injury is in Markel's head. And that's not something that's made up in your head. When you've got that compression and you're struggling and your arm is blue and numb, and you go to the doctors, they don't know what's going on with you. It's pretty scary. All in all, just looking at recent clips, it still seems that even if Markel's shot is progressing somewhat, to me, it just doesn't look like he's comfortable shooting a basketball. Whatever the case, we don't know the answer to what exactly is happening with Markel because the Sixers have been extremely vague as to what is happening. And maybe that's not their fault. Maybe they themselves are not sure what's happening. So I'm pretty sure they do know what's happening. They just don't want to admit to everybody that what he has 
is quite serious. And I know a lot of people that have thoracic atlet syndrome that have developed clots because of the tightness and the compression. And it can become very dangerous. So he's got a few options. He's got the physical therapy. And if that doesn't work, he's going to have to go for an operation where they cut his top rib out. So TOS is just one of those things that's so difficult to diagnose. And even if you have symptoms yourself, getting the right diagnosis from doctors is so tricky because if they haven't seen it before, um, they're not going to know what's, what's wrong with you. And if you haven't researched, you're not going to know what's wrong with yourself. And it's, it varies. There's so many symptoms and you could have so many different pains and it's just so difficult to diagnose. So if you think you have symptoms, um, all my other videos, I've got a whole list of my whole journey struggling with thoracic artery syndrome and recovering and helping a lot of people. There's also support groups on uh, Facebook. You can search. There's uh, trigger point groups. There's support groups. There's a whole bunch of people struggling that uh, you'll never know unless you're struggling with it and you search for it. So uh, join us there. Subscribe to this channel and uh, just share the videos so that it can help somebody else. So I'll see you guys soon.